All right, understanding the hydrogen line and radio signals from alien worlds. Now, let me just say right off that we have not received any signals from alien worlds, from any alien civilization out there. We've never have, except we did receive this wow signal, which I'll talk about in the video. There's a lot to go over here, um, so we'll see if we can make this one or two parts. Hopefully, we can make it one part. The thing about you know, where are they? If you know this vast universe, you think we would receive some kind of sign, some kind of signal from out there. And the thing about radio signals, and we're also talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, which I'll explain, they do not remain intact at long distances. So if you think about those shows from the 50s, you know, we sent out I Love Lucy, that TV show. We sent out those radio waves because radio t TV shows are radio waves. And when they go out there, they spread out as they propagate. As they move through space, they're going to spread out and they're going to be distorted. So let's say that we sent out the I Love Lucy show or whatever 50s show out there. You bet your life or something. And it reached, let's say, Proxima Centauri, which is four light years away, our closest star. By the time it reached Alpha Centauri, Let's say there was an alien civilization on Alpha Centauri, and they had the, the equipment to detect this. The signal would be so weakened, so distorted. So if we sent, let's say, a, a music a song, we sent a song out to Alpha Centauri, they just, they just would not hear what the song, what the music was. It would be so distorted. So that's what happens at radio signals anyway. Um, however, even though they will not be able to hear what the message is probably not don't understand it because of our language but they would still know that it's not natural so let's get into that first let's understand the hydrogen line and radio signals so way back in 1977 we did receive this signal it's called a wow signal and i'm going to explain that and it lasted for 72 seconds so it didn't repeat itself. There's, but for those 72 seconds, it seemed like it was very concentrated, very what they call a narrow band. And that's why they call it the wow signal. But we'll get to that. First, we need to understand the hydrogen line. So hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. By far, 74% of the universe, of matter that is, we're talking about matter, not dark matter, not dark energy, but of matter, 74% of the universe is hydrogen and 24 percent is helium so the rest those two percent is everything else so there's considerable amount of hydrogen and that's important when we're talking about this video well hydrogen what we'll do is it will emit a radio frequency now, let me write this down for you it'll emit a and i'll explain how it does that but it, it will emit a radio frequency and it's really a microwave frequency but if it's going to be 1420 roughly within that range, megahertz. And it happens all the time. So this frequency is being shot out all over space. And when we pick this up, you know, if you had a microwave receiver, not a microwave oven, but if you had a microwave receiver, you would pick up, if you're picking up 1,420 megahertz, you're picking up hydrogen. So let's explain the electromagnetic spectrum anyway so we can get a little idea of what's happening here. Let's get a clean page. By the way, here's a microwave receiver. So if you had one of these fancy things and you were picking up 1,420 megahertz around that area, you're picking up hydrogen, which I'll explain. Now, if you're, if you're picking up something within that range, 1,420 point something, and it's repeated and it's concentrated, then you're picking up something that's not natural, unnatural, and it's a deliberate signal. So that's why the hydrogen line is important. So let's write the electromagnetic spectrum. And the electromagnetic spectrum is light. It's not just visible light. You know, we only see visible light. The electromagnetic spectrum is radio. Radio waves are light. We, we don't see radio waves, right? And then there's micro. And there's infrared. And then there's visible light. I'll just put VL for visible light. There's UV, ultraviolet light. There's X-rays. Oh, this is light. These are photons of light. 
and there's gamma. And they go from the longest, change the color here, maybe we'll use blue, go from the longest wavelengths with the lowest energy to the shortest wavelengths with the highest energy. So gamma, x-ray, UV, these are very dangerous photons. They can damage your DNA. They're ionizing. But in the radio spectrum, radio, we have many frequencies. We have very low frequency. We have low frequency. We have medium frequency. We have high frequency. You know, we have VHF. You probably have heard VHF, very high frequency. This is FM, FM radio. This is TV. So we've been sending out VHF signal. And, you know, we'll have AM radio over here and so forth. We've been sending these signals into space since radio, right? So at least 100 years. In the 1920s, they were sending radio broadcasts. And these, these signals go out into space. They will just continue to go and go and go. They're never going to stop, right? Now, most of them would have been distorted leaving the Earth's atmosphere. And if they did head to, let's say, Proxima Centauri, our closest star, if there was an alien civilization there, they probably wouldn't be, they just wouldn't be able to pick up the broadcasts if there was intelligent life there. They would pick up a signal. They would know it's not natural, though. That's very important. Okay, and then we're getting into the microwave. So when we're looking at VHF, and then there's UHF. So we're looking at from 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. And remember, the, the signal we're looking from the hydrogen line is 1420 megahertz. So this is in the microwave range. And when they just say micro and radio, you're going to see just radio telescopes. They're just going to say radio telescopes. By the way, micro usually goes from 1,420 megahertz. Infrared usually starts at 300 gigahertz. Visible light, we're looking at tetrahertz. Tetra, we'll say tetrahertz in that range. And of course, as you get to gamma, they're a very incredible amount of energy and very dangerous. All right, let me clear this out. Rewind if you want to look at these numbers. So hydrogen... And just draw a rough picture of hydrogen. So we have, it has one proton and it has one electron. That's all hydrogen is, right? And what it will do is it will randomly, spontaneously, sometimes what happens is it will, well, we have to talk something about spin. But before that, let's look at what happens when a photon hits hydrogen. So let's say we'll have a photon in yellow. Now, we call these, and a long time ago, they used to call these orbits. An electron, the electron is not revolving around the proton in the nucleus. It's not doing that. We, that you know, that's what we used to think. It's actually, we don't know what it's doing. It's just appearing randomly around its cloud. We call it a cloud. And a long time ago, they called it a ring or an orbit. And this cloud is an energy level. And so you can see hydrogen has one energy level. What will happen is if a photon hits the electron, the electron will absorb its energy. So the electron is going to absorb the photon's energy. And it depends on what photon it is. It could be a gamma photon. If it's a gamma photon, the electron is going to just just knock right its, itself right out of the atom because the gamma photon has an enormous amount of energy. But if it's a visible light photon, let's say, whatever, it's going to hit this electron. The electron is going to be now full of energy, and it's going to go into a higher energy state. It's just going to move into it. Let's get red there. Create another little cloud here, little ring. So it's going to end up in a higher energy state. Just think about this when you think about kids in school. If you give kids after lunch, they're full of energy from all that food, and they go to recess, and they're running all over the place. And eventually, though, they will have to come back down because this state, when the electron moves into this new state, it's unstable. And so it eventually will lose its energy and go back down to its original state, which is called the ground state. 
And then from there, it will create a new photon because this uh, the original photon will cease to exist. And so a new photon will be created and that new photon will send out frequencies and it will send out light depending on what it was. If it was a red photon from the red wavelength, red is the longest wavelength of visible light. If a red photon hit the electron, eventually red will be emitted outside and you'll see the color red. If it was a blue photon, you'll see the color blue and so forth. Let's get a picture of that. All right. So let's just say that we have a photon. We'll, we'll let's get a different color in here. We'll use we'll use purple. Let's say there's a proton. There's a proton over here, and then there's an electron. There's the electron. And let's say you know we have a photon coming in and it hits the electron. So the electron goes up a, to another energy level. The electron, and then it will come back down. So now it's over here. And get our pen working and of course it will come back down to the ground state and it will emit a new photon because the other photon ceases to exist and let's say that this was a photon was the a red photon from the wed, red not the wed but the red wavelength so it'll emit the color red and so forth now hydrogen will also do something else that's what we're going to talk about with this hydrogen line all right, so here's our hydrogen. And what will happen, and I'm going to write this another fancy word up here. We'll use yellow. It's called the hyper fine transition. And very simply, what will happen is the electron and the proton they have this property called spin. And don't try to focus spin in our world, in our classical physics world. They're not really spinning. It's just a quantum term that they use. So what's happening is the electron in the hydrogen will spontaneously flip its spin. So its value is opposite the proton spin. It's called the spin flip transition. Spin flip transition. So again, the electron will spontaneously flip its spin. So its value is opposite the protons. That's the spin flip transition. And when this happens, a photon is going to be created and it will release a freak. The frequency it's being released at, guess what, is around 1420 megahertz. So knowing that hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, we would assume that any advanced civilization trying to communicate with us, and this is what we're trying to do also, we would try to get within that range of 1420 because they would know what we're trying to do. We know that hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. So if we use the frequency of 1420 within that range and we repeated that signal, we concentrated that signal in a narrow band, then an alien civilization will say that's not natural. That could be a way we can communicate with them. So this brings us to the wow, the wow signal. Let's get to the wow signal. Put a wow here. By the way, this is protium. It's a uh, hydrogen isotope. There's there's two other types of hydrogen, deuterium and tritium. But the one we're we're concentrating with the, this hyperfine transition is protium. In case you're wondering. So the wow signal was happened on August 15th, 1977. Long time ago, right? It was in Ohio State University at their the Big Ear Telescope. And what happens is they found a frequency for 72 seconds of 1420.456 megahertz above the hydrogen line. And it was narrow band. It was concentrated. The only thing is it only lasted 72 seconds and it never happened again. All these years, we've never picked up anything like it. That's why it was called the wow signal. Let me show you what it had looked like. So when they picked up this transition, they said, wow. Right? So it doesn't stand for anything, but just wow. So you're running with the 6EQ 
J5 means? Well, that's the concentration it was picking up. I'll show you another picture of that. So this is what it was picking up. So this anything above nine, they start using letters. So first they had a they had a six, and then they went above the level, the intensity. You can see here on the y-axis the intensity. It went to around fourteen, which is an E, and then above twenty-five is a Q, and so forth. And then it went right down to five. So this all that meant it was the intensity of the signal, the of the wow signal. And again, it lasted 72 seconds, and it was never repeated. If this thing was repeated, it had a, and you can see that it had a concentrated signal. And we know, you know, from this signal alone, it seems like it was on, it was unnatural, but it wasn't repeated. But if it was repeated over and over again, we would consider this uh, a message. But again, we never received any other message. We've never seen this repeat ever since 1977. All right, and that's our that's our video today.